and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to our first alumni series today. This talk is about our monthly talk series which will be streamed live on MMU Malaysia YouTube channel as well as our Multimedia University Facebook page. So Thank you for joining and thank you for being with us today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And how is everyone today? Today is a Wednesday. Of course, I'm sure some of us have uh, online classes to go through as well as working from home. And for our MS, the best. And to all our audiences at home, hopefully you are safely at home, um, taking care of yourself and your family during this new normal. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, today we will delve on a legal talk titled What You Don't Know Can Hurt You. So this is in the context of a legal discussion providing what we are not aware of but can affect to us as a society. Here with us today, it is an honour for me to introduce you two of our speakers, our alumni MMU, Mr. Francis Augustine and Ms. Hajvini Reka. Hi, Ms. And Ms. Ms. Hajvini. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's right. very nice to be here with everyone. Yes, thank you for being with us today. So before we begin on our talk, let's get to know a little bit about our speakers. A little bit about Mr. Francis first. He graduated Bachelor of Law in Multi University and then pursued Master's in Law in National. After that, he went on to be a lecturer in University Tunku Abdul Rahman. And currently, since 2014, he is now a lecturer in Multimedia University. So for those of you who don't know, Mr. Francis is knowledgeable in environmental law, equity and trust, jurisprudence and cyber law. So Mr. Francis, just a quick question. How did you game about to have this interest? In it's, uh, it's been something that I've always been interested in since I was a child. I remember when I was very young in primary school, there was a cartoon show called Captain Planet and the Planeteers maybe some very young uh, as a child. And then uh, with other subjects, I think partly it became uh, something that I am interested in because of the awareness uh, that developed from teaching and also learning the subject, uh, both as a student and also as a lecturer. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Let's move on to Ms. Hashbini. A little bit about herself is that she also graduated Bachelor of Law, of course, in Multimedia University of Malaya. And in 2016, she became a lecturer in Multimedia University. Up until last year, in 2020, she then transferred to University of Reading Malaysia as a lecturer. So for Ms. Hashvini, and for those of you who don't know, she is very well knowledgeable in cyber law, commercial law, and Malaysian legal system. So the same question, Ms. Hashvini. So, uh, when I was an undergrad student in MNU, uh, cyber law uh, has been offered as a core paper. I was second year, so I took a very keen interest in that paper. I really liked it, and also I actually discovered that there are was a very vast amount of possibilities that is still undiscovered in the internet world. So that's how I actually took an interest in uh, cyber law, and currently I'm actually pursuing my uh, PhD attached to. So that's about it. The, the, that's the reason why I'm interested in cyber law. Okay, thank, thank you, you Miss Ashby. Alright, so let's break down our title today, What You Don't Know Can Hurt You. It sounds serious, but only because it is true. You know, it can be very concerning that the public nowadays are really at an alarming state of knowledge that they have in basics of law. And so this talk is to enlighten the public briefly on why it is important to know the basics and what is there to know of the things around us. So, Mr. Francis, I'm just going to ask you, why is it important for the public to know at least the basics about law? Um, uh, the, the question revolves around the fact that the law uh, regulates and covers. And now it is going above the sky and slowly off into space as well. So if, if the law is covering all of this, then all parts of our human lives are being covered by law. 
So as a result, it is only wise for us to know uh, what these laws are so that we don't get into trouble uh, and to answer your question, lawyers to fix it. Because if we've already done something long that, wrong, there is only so much that our lawyers can do to, to reduce, we use the word mitigate, to reduce uh, the, the punishment or the sentencing we shouldn't do in the first place, uh, then fall into the trap and then try to get out of it. Yes, that's very much true, Mr. Francis. I agree with that. And also, the public usually raises this phrase, I don't know the law, so why should it bother me? There is a defence where ignorance of the law is not even a defence. So, Ms. Hashvini, do you agree with this statement, ignorance of the law is not a defence to be do something? doesn't mean we, we are allowed to do that, right? Uh, since young, we are taught on basic moral principles and what's right and wrong. So it's, it's expected for us as an ordinary human being, a full-grown adult or a human being basically, that you're expected to be a good person. So hence, just because you don't know it's wrong and no one can actually really use that as an excuse, as a defense in the court of law. So that's actually my opinion on this. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hashbini. Yes, that's very much true. I so we're going to look into a various fields of area of law and which has been surfacing over the past few years and it's time for us to raise a little awareness about this. So Ms. Hashbini, being herself an expertise in cyber law, she's going to share with us about cyber law, particularly online defamation and cyber bullying. And then we're going to go through online child predators. Is that right, Ms. Hashbini? Will preparation. Right, Mr. Francis? Um, actually, I'm uh, better with equity and trust, but uh, equity has a lot to do, to, trust has a lot to do with wills, so that's how I'm working wills into our conversation today. All right, so we're going to take a look in equity and trust, that kind of perspective. Yes, thank you, Mr. Francis. And let us have a short break. We have a sec special segment prepared for you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called Upper Kabar Permata Dunia, which will give us the latest updates on several of our Permata Dunia, current developments and where they are now and what they're doing. And next, we will watch a very short video of from Yayasan University Multimedia Endowment Promo. So stay tuned. We graduated in 2003 from Faculty of Business and Law. Currently, I'm, student, I'm working in Student Affairs Division, Multimedia University, as the Manager of Student Development and Activities Unit. So I started to work here in 2003 and until now. So, what actually drives me to stay here? First, we am on the TM group itself. So, despite of going to other subsidiaries of TM, I decided to stay in a menu and try to contribute back to the university itself. In a menu, actually, where we learn how to adapt with the changes. In MMU is where we meet people, we make friends. In MMU is how we... I work here since um, July 2003 and until now I'm still in Student Affairs Division. So currently I'm the manager of Student Affairs, uh, Student Activities and like to be here with the students and to be in charge with the activities. Previously while I was studied in MMU, I was active with the activities and I'm also here because it is where I can help the juniors and also I can help the students to grow and also have a sharing with the other alumni which were also my friends back then. My name is Paul Zianita. I can you easily find in Facebook Paul Zianita and just that we can add you in the Facebook, okay? So besides that, if you are planning to come back or you are planning to contribute back to the community in MMU, especially to your juniors, especially giving your experiences, giving talks and then maybe you have some tips to share with them, how you want to survive outside there, how you want to get better jobs, better also contribute back to the universities. Hi, my name is Tuan Faisal. Uh, I am uh, an alumni from MMU, graduated in 2002. I am now the Chief Marketing Officer at Nagasaki. We are a cyber security services provider um, in the ASEAN region at this of time. My role is to grow the company, looking at uh, partnerships, service delivery, looking at uh, new services and customer happiness, able to hone my leadership skills 
and apply it to the business and also to the position that I have at this point of time. Looking at how to enroll people to a greater vision and looking at uh, the purpose, the higher purpose of us being working as a team together to reach that vision of the company. So yeah, I mean, it's a great place and uh, all the best. Hi, saya Kairo Azizi. Saya merupakan alumni uh, NLU uh, dan uh, saya bertugas sebagai CIO iaitu Chief Insight Officer. Kita ni uh, membantu para peniaga online uh, untuk accept payment daripada customer-customer. Uh, maknanya kita provide service uh, accept payment dan so last kali end up dia nak terima payment. So dah buat online semua tetapi nak 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 cuba barang ni kena punya TV ya. so tak tak fully online lah so uh, kita provide the facilities so you boleh pergi kepada kita punya website uh, senampi.my dan uh, untuk ahli Welcome back everyone. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you all enjoyed the Apa Kabar Permata. We're going to start off with cyber law. Okay, Miss Hajwiri, of course, about online defamation. So it starts with a very trending issue of us where people turn to another communication virtually since uh, during this pandemic. And this is what we call the internet. So we have online messaging, we have video callings and also we have social media. But it becomes media that might affect you and also the people around you. So, Ms. Hashmini, how would we know when something we say online? For example, if we post something on Facebook or on Instagram or we reply to a comment on Twitter, how would we know that it could actually be wrong to other people? Uh, a simple, thank you, Atina, for the question. Okay. A simple way to actually evaluate that would be so uh, if uh, anyone, it could be a celebrity, it could be a politician, it could be your friend, or it could be someone that you don't like, any, a normal person also. When, when you comment something false, right, a person comments something false, something amazing, or something that is obscene under the chat box or the comment box, that would already amount to online defamation, actually. So, how would we identify that? First of all, it starts with our own self. We need to know what's wrong, what's right, what we're supposed to do, what we are not online so yeah that's about it thank you Atira. and all that so what do you think Ms. Hashmini is it true can you actually say I have a freedom of speech in this country I am a Malaysia I can say whatever I want in the internet okay all right uh, can I share my screen okay one thing about uh, this particular online defamation right a defamation it falls under thoughts law law of thoughts. But however, for online defamation, we have a specific law uh, in Malaysia. It's under the Communication Particular Act, right? Uh, it governs whatever that's actually posted online, you know, whatever that's posted online by using an internet service provider. So uh, let me show a few things. Sorry, right, Miss Hajwini, okay. just take your time. Can you see my screen? Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, all right, okay. All right, so uh, so I'm just showing a few of the social media platforms, uh, logo, one is Twitter, YouTube, the set uh, actions or online defamation or anything that's posted on social media. So a good case, an example would be a Fami Rosa's case. Um, I think you can see on my screen, I'm actually presenting uh, slide where it's actually uh, at the back it shows a badut kind of poster, clown poster, it's actually our ex-premier uh, Datuk Sri Najib. So here uh, Fami Reza he was actually uh, sued and he was actually sentenced for a month jail and a fine of 30,000 ringgit in uh, 2018 February. 
for actually posting this kind of defamatory pictures and obscene pictures, indecent pictures, which hurts the feeling of our ex-Prime Minister. And eventually, uh, it was dropped in the year 2018, uh, October. So after Akatan Harapan won the general election in May on the same year. So uh, it has been mentioned that uh, by uh, our minister, uh, ex-communication and multimedia minister, Gobind Singh Dio, because the section in Communication and Multimedia Act, it's too broad and anyone can sue anyone for online defamation and there's no freedom of speech, like what you mentioned. So it was supposed to be amended, but however, it didn't happen. We all know what happened. Um, the particular government, it has been uh, toppled down and hence there was no amendment. The law was not repealed. It's still in place. So under Communication and Multimedia Act, Online defamation is a serious offence, so I would strongly suggest not to do that. So yeah. All right, all right, all right. Wow, that's very interesting. So they're going to tighten the law, and we um, we already have the law in place. It's just that uh, the question that you posed uh, to me just now about regarding freedom of speech, right? Because that's one of our fundamental liberty in federal constitution. People, citizens of Malaysia, must be able to really criticize our politicians, our leaders, okay? So that is the reason why the charges against Fahmi Reza was eventually dropped. Uh, so the reason that law needs an amendment is because it's too broad. It needs to be narrowed down to, to what kind of defamation, what kind of actions can be charged, what kind of online defamation can be charged. There's no specific... Uh, it's not specified in the... Thank you, Ms. Hashmini. Um, You're we'll, Well, we've discussed uh, on something that happens on the virtual realm, uh, and now let's come back a short while to things that happens around us, you know, the physical world. Hopefully, you don't forget about that because during the lockdown, we've seen people take up new habits uh, and new hobbies, daily routines, you know, just to get through the new normal. And one of these is, of course, we see... For instance, if your friend tells you that I've got a new pet, you immediately jump to the assumption like they've got a dog or a cat, but instead they've got exotic pets like parrots, snakes, reptiles, even um, like monkeys. And these animals are so much different than the domestic pets that we usually have. So of course, we go to our environmental law expertise, Mr. Francis. Thank you, Akira. Um, uh, yes, it, it, uh, long story short, it is dangerous, it is unwise, in, it is a bad idea to have uh, wild animals or exotic animals uh, as pets. Uh, but I've prepared quite a bit of a segment for you, if you don't mind. Uh, can I present uh, some content and uh, give out uh, what I have prepared to say? Is that yes. okay with you? Yeah. Um, Sorry, there seems to be a small problem. Just give me one moment, yeah? yeah. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Take your time. Is... Um, people often defend themselves from buying uh, pets or these pets that they take home from the zoo, you know, because we've seen a lot of how zoos shut down and they need people to... It's part of what I, I have to share with you. Um, all right, so let's see if it works better this time. I had it all worked out just a moment earlier. Very interested. To know. Some of the reasons why people even engage in the idea in the uh, in, in this practice of having exotic animals, then we see that it actually ends up translating into a perspective of why it also is not so great an idea. So, like first up, we go straight to social media. It seems to be the problem with everything. Now we have inspiring videos of uh, loving animals, for example, on Facebook. Sometimes it's shared to us by our elderly family members uh, on WhatsApp. And we see on these inspiring videos, like for example, a kangaroo is being raised by a family of human beings. And so the, kang uh, the kangaroo grows up to be a loving member of the family. Or we have a, a, a dog that uh, raises a kitten. Uh, as if it were its own child. Uh, so these kinds of videos, uh, especially where we, we see it is uh, 
which such animals have got these loving feelings just like any other regular uh, domestic animals and so we think we believe we are led to believe through these videos that you know what they can part of our family uh, they love us just as much as our dogs or our cats or our hamsters or something like that so right. that is that is one source of a, a reason then after that we have a uh, social media uh, we have uh, instagram we have tiktok we've got facebook which uh, it, from where we can see other people are living that life the life of having a new pet uh, a pet of a, a wonderful, beautiful yellow and white uh, boa constrictor, for example, very alluring, very striking colors, or they're exciting. And as we all know, as we all know, uh, social media has the habit, uh, has the effect of tuning our minds to a certain perspective. And the more we see right, uh, people media. we follow, the more we see people we follow having such things we too believe that we want it and so we want to jump on the trend think about it this hair color didn't come to me for any other reason it was following the trend as well wow, <laughs> okay i see yes yes uh, and then we also have celebrities like recently part of, yes which is listed on on the endangered list while very much protected under the malaysian yes, yes. law right so this was something that happened recently she said that she thought it was a dog uh, uh, and may present themselves having such animals and then uh, there is also the natural concept of you know this animal is beautiful it's unique it's exotic you know that i also want because of that allure which then takes us to the whole desire and ego and my choice kind of a concept it's my choice i can have it i want it uh, it you know uh, that whole uh, me 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 sort of a thing so uh, not taking into consideration how difficult the pet may be to raise how incompatible the pet may be to have in an apartment setting for example uh, but you know i want it it's my right so that that very uh, selfish sort of sort of mentality gives rise to this as well and uh, Two other things that have become very much problematic, two more factors that become very much problematic is number one, it has become increasingly easy to buy and sell exotic animals because of all the above reasons to sell it. If they want, all they have to go is to go into the jungle, catch some, uh, some baby animal, kill the mother. Uh, it's not too difficult. It's not like the baby, the, the, par uh, the yes, mother yes, ran with and guess what? It's easily available for sale on Facebook on Instagram in Malaysia. So easy to find. All you have to do is type in the correct keywords and you'll be able to find people there. And lastly, from personal experience, I have found that people, uh, for example, uh, Malaysians as well, think that having these exotic or wild animals uh, as pets would be best to conserve these animals that are becoming endangered. Uh, thinking that, you know what, if I can keep it in my home and I can keep it there to mumbia, all right, to, to breed the animal, then yeah. it will not go pupus, it will not go extinct. Uh, and uh, this is a comment I actually found on the Perhilitan uh, Facebook website. Uh, and I had to actually put a comment there saying, you know what, I know you understand you're trying to do the good, the right thing, you're trying to do good, but wow, unfortunately, it's not the right thing. I actually gave a long comment uh <laughs> explaining why it's a bad idea and uh, course, course. for some for some reason it has come back that i am now on on a huge screen now uh or at least on some people's huge screen and i'm going to be able to give you that same comment uh, would you like to hear some of uh, the reasons why it is a bad idea Oh, well, this is a very thorough discussion, Mr. Francis, but unfortunately, we are on a ticking time. We have to move I on to our next topic. I will make it quick and short for you. Is that okay? All right, sure, sure. Yes, all right. So, uh, it is not a good reason simply because, for one, it is illegal. Since we're talking law here, it is yes. illegal. Uh, the Wildlife Conservation Act in sections 9, 10, 11 makes it an offence, right? A federal offence uh, to have such animals without a licence for each one animal. And if you're found guilty, you could go to prison, you could be fined, or you could, be, you could go to prison and be fined. And for example, in the case of a public prosecutor against Abdul Haq, I, uh, uh, pled guilty. So even with his guilty plea, the punishment was quite uh, clear to say this is not right. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. He had 
this kind of an animal. This is what he was found to be having. And as a result, it was uh, he, he was found guilty. Uh, besides that, um, it's also not a good idea to have pets because they're just not adapted to live with us. They don't have the natural instinct to live with us. They're still wild animals. If they are threatened, they could attack. And think about it, they've got claws, they've got fangs. If they attack, well, uh, it would be quite bad for us. Um, it is expensive. You want to buy them, you have got to uh, feed them as they grow. They'll need more food. They'll need special medical attention. And if you can't afford to do this, guess what you will end up doing? You will release them because you cannot handle them. And if you release them, it endangers people around them. All right. And if you release snakes, for example, imagine suddenly a cobra or, or a python is in your house because your neighbor couldn't deal with it anymore. All right. And very topical. I will end on this very, very topical reason why it's not good because of zootic diseases. Uh, we have HIV AIDS today because some people thought it was a great idea to play around with uh, chimpanzees. And so the virus from the chimpanzee came uh, transferred to human beings. And so it became HIV. All right. We are all suffering from the pandemic of COVID-19, which is due to exposure, to, uh, which is due to exposure from um, the, the bats, uh, so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, time, thank you for being patient. Thank you, Mr. Francis. It was very insightful, very deep discussion. And the implications is, of course, far off very wide. Okay, you can even get imprisonment and also fine both together for having these pets. So, moral of the story, just adopt a cat or a dog, have a hamster or a rabbit at home, all right? Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Francis. Let's come back to Ms. Hashvini. Okay, previously I mentioned on how the internet takes over the medium of communication and that now, of course, one of the things we do is online dating, am I right? Not only we meet each other for a cup of coffee, but we also instead uh, have online dating apps, applications, right? So everyone has access to internet these days, even our children. So the public shakes when online uh, dating applications involve their children. So of course, Ms. Hajbini, we're going to talk about online child predators, the harm and dangerous levels of online child predators, how do these techniques and their platforms and their strategies actually target these children? Okay, thank you, Akira, for the question. Uh, I'm actually presenting my screen. I hope you can see it. Yep. Okay, so as for uh, online uh, dating, right, uh, for adults to date online using the apps, it shouldn't be a problem. It's not, it's not such a big deal, okay, it's something that's normal, but however, when it involves children, it gets a little bit too dangerous, okay? For example, um, sharing something on your on the screen, it's an application, it's called Omega. Okay, it has been in existence for quite some time, but however, it became very famous and the users they grew in numbers like in millions during the MCO time because people were bored, right? They need to they just, yeah, they just needed true. to spend their time online. So on this app, it's basically uh, anyone can just log into this app. Um, they could it's anonymous actually, anonymous kind of thing and log into it and they would be randomly talking to any strangers it's very random the, the selection of the person that they want to talk to is random so the camera is on and surprisingly this application is allowed for children above the age of 13 but with parental guidance that's what the website mentions but a lot of the children a lot of children these days they are using internet phones without their parents guidance yeah, because of yeah. the online classes they are going through so here on this app, it's strangers. You don't know who's on the other side of the camera. It could be a sexual predator who's trying to groom a child. So other than this particular application, there are a few applications as well that I would like to point out to the parents or whoever that's listening here, especially for an adult. If you have a child or a sister or a brother who is young, please, please keep an eye on them. WeChat, Tinder, Snapchat, Facebook dating app, uh, all these are very, very prominent and they are used by these online sexual predators to actually lure kids in. And there's another thing also that uh, the sexual predators they use, uh, it's called Among Us. I'm, I'm very sure the current generation, they would know this game. It's Among Us. I think probably Akira as well. Do you know Akira? Yeah, I've you played it, it before. 
you know, played, right? So I played this game. It's actually a game. You can download it on your phone using App Store or Play Store, Google Play Store. I tried playing this game because I have younger siblings. They were playing. And random people can just chat with you. Then so when they chat, they, it's not decent. It's very sexual in nature. It's very sexual, sexual in nature. And imagine children play. Children means anyone below the age of 18, they are children. So they can get groomed. They will be groomed over the years or days or months. So basically, that's where child grooming, it starts when the child has been groomed and the child has begun, begun to uh, trust the adult and they will start sending nudes, you know, yes, something yes, very normal. Them. Yeah, they start sending It's an nudes. unpleasant situation, you know, happening. It's very unpleasant. Them. And children, you know, children being children, they believe everything and everyone. <laughs> So, so that's how child grooming starts. That's the platform. It's in online these days, it's very easy for sexual predators. So parents have to be very careful, and uh, also be beware of the applications, the games that your kids are using, especially if it has a chat chat box uh, feature. Be careful. Uh, keep an eye. All right. So, all right. Um, would you like to know the laws that available for this? Yes, yeah, sure. Actually, I was just going to ask, like, what can we do to help if, the, if we come to a cross to have this uh, online child predators in mind? Okay, so uh, in Malaysia, right, we have a law. Okay, uh, it's actually Sexual Offences Against Children Act 2017. It's very new. It's recent. It's been just four years. Previous to we didn't have it previous to this. So in this act, uh, in Section 12, it specifically. Uh, mentions a child grooming. So whoever, like any person who communicates by any means with a child with the intention to commit or to facilitate the commission of any offence in a sexual manner, all right, will be punished. Okay, will be punished and the punishment is actually imprisonment and uh, and also there is a hefty amount of fine. So there is a law in place, but it is better to prevent Right, it's better to prevent yeah. before you regret it because children they are precious, you no, know, they're, they're precious, and because it's online and they have access to it. So, as a parent, it would be a suggestion that you keep an eye on your children and teach them the appropriate uh, terms, sexual terms uh, that adults actually use. Because some kids they don't understand, so they just assume it's something, something random, right? And also, especially, um. You know, uh, when it comes to uh, sexual organs, children, uh, parents, they don't teach the kids the right term. They always give it a name, a nickname. So when a, when a child is trying to say something, she or he is going to use the nickname and parents are going to get confused. And they might even ignore or even brush it off as the kid is being, what is that, merepek lah, probably, it might happen. So make sure your child is properly educated when it comes to this kind of issue because this is serious guys it's not it's no longer uncommon it's very common but we have a lot no worries but it's just that it's better to prevent before it actually happens yeah right, right? True. thank you miss hashmini of course okay. it's better to prevent and how do we know of something that we have to prevent by knowing these basics you know if we don't then it will be too late by then and of course it can happen to anyone your nieces your nephews your little sister or brother so same thing apply pay more attention to your children to the ch children at home all right thank you miss hashmini for that and next, we'll move on to our last topic, alright? So this area of law involves very particular and crucial step in our life because this is when we have families, we have children, and we have properties and things of our own. So, this is called will preparation. But for some people, it is considered bad luck if you make a will as soon as possible because you're going to think like, I'm going to make a will today, I might likely die tomorrow, right? So of course, Equity and trust expertise, Mr. Francis. Why is having a will important for us, and why don't uh, don't we have to wait until the end for for us to make a will? Um, hi, I'm Atira. All right. So, uh, to answer this, uh, it goes to very much this superstitious idea that it is bad luck to do this or bad luck to do that. Uh, when at the end of the day, it is a lot of just wisdom. Okay, um, we need to prepare our wills because uh, malang tidak berbau. We have okay. to sediakan payung sebelum hujan. Uh, 
we don't know when what will happen to us and if we have people who are depending on us our dependents for example we have a spouse uh, we have children we have elderly parents uh, are no longer available how will they uh, how will they provide for themselves what happens all right now uh, there is a mechanism through the distribution act all right uh, through the distribution act that allows for property to be distributed to the dependents children spy, uh, spouses uh, and uh, parents for example there is a, a clear uh, distribution of uh, 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 of how much each person will receive however uh, the the purpose of a will is to go far beyond that uh, it's not just for distributing property but rather also to leave a legacy, to leave uh, uh, intentions behind. And for example, you can always leave instructions and intentions behind for a specific child to provide for the child in a very unique or special way. As you would know that the law in its distribution act, in its generality, would not be able to provide for the child. All right. So let's say, for example, if I were to have a child, uh, his name is Abu. Abu loves animals. He wants to become a herpetologist, expert in, in, in snakes. Right. OK. Yeah. I can leave behind in my will instructions that uh, he is to be trained. He is to give him all the opportunity and facilities to make his dream come true to be a herpetologist. And because I have left it in a will, uh, the people who take over from me are bound to this. All right, they're bound to this because I'm leaving behind a trust. I'm leaving behind an intention for, for this fit for our people, uh, our dependents. It is also to leave behind trust. It is to leave behind a legacy. It is to leave behind specific interests and specific intentions for the people whom we love. And uh, we should leave behind this um, uh, how shall I put it? Superstitious way of thinking, you know, touch wood for this, touch wood for that. Uh, if I if I make a will, you know, a car will fall on my head tomorrow. All of these things would not happen if it's meant to happen. Well, we should have prepared a will beforehand. Yeah, true, no? Of course. <laughs> yes, it's true. Thank you, right. Adira. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Francis. And that is about trust, about making a will, why it's important not to wait until the very last minute. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have gone through four topics of, about law and they were very enlightening and informative. Thank you so much to Mr. Francis and Ms. Hashfini all right, for those information. And these areas of laws are just a few of the wide areas that we have. We have criminal law, we have civil, we have sharia, we have a property and we have land but we're not going to dwell into those today it's a lot complicated than it sounds and uh, however in fact after listening to Mr Francis and Ms Hashfini it makes us wonder that it is very important to know the law and how much it is that we don't know yet and of course uh, listening to Mr. Francis and Ms. Hashbini, who had gone all the way back starting from Multimedia University, it goes to show how much the Faculty of Law of MMU provides to its students. So here in MMU, we have a very active Faculty of Law and not just in academic, but also we have programs, we have events and we have um, we have programs, events uh, that could be done for social skills and soft skills will feature the Faculty of Law of MMU Melaka. But before that, let's have a brief chat and welcome Puan Professional Technologist Natalia Datuk Shamswa from the Strategic Marketing Admission and Recruitment Division of Multimedia University with us. Hi Puan Natalia, how are you? Hello Nuru, thank you for having me in this um, episode of MMU Alumni Vibes with the alumni from Faculty of Law. Thank you for being with us today. So, Puan Natalia, just a quick one. Can you share with us a little bit on the upcoming MMU April intake? What is new and what is there to offer in MMU to the new batch this time around? Uh, yes, we have our April intake uh, open at the moment and we look forward to have those who are dynamic, passionate as how you have seen um, Francis is and Hashbini is, you know, we are looking for more of these uh, personalities that would want to join MMU. Unfortunately, in the April 2021 intake, uh, the Faculty of Law does not 
have any uh, opening or offering. We only open the Faculty of Law programs in the July intake. But nevertheless, if those who are listening now, uh, there are other programs, uh, foundation programs, uh, diploma programs, degree programs, and also postgraduate programs from the other nine faculties in MMU. We have all these programs from the various fields uh, and domains. Unfortunately, again, in the April 2021 uh, intake, we do not uh, open for law. We will only open law in July. So, uh, of course, besides law, there are other nine faculties offering all these programs and they are all top notch, just like uh, the faculty of law programs. Uh, we have our programs in the other faculties in the industry driven. Uh, we are also entrepreneurial and all of our programs, including the law programs, as you, as you can see, speaks of multimedia technology very differently. You know, so uh, many other universities offer law programs as you can see what francis and hashbini has shared they branch out into all the new emerging areas where multimedia technology are the key areas that you would want to venture into so um why you would want to join us in our april 2021 intake is that our tuition fee for the foundation program is now six thousand ringgit Again, except for law, it has become uh, like as if it's a back line today, Francis and Hashbini. It's like, except for law, you know. So, but uh, the other programs are all um, for foundation, it's 6,000 for the April 2021 intake. Uh, should you decide not to do foundation program, you would also have the choice of doing diploma programs. And if you join in the April 2021 intake, you would be enjoying a registration fee waiver. So this is not, um, you know, something we often do, but you would not want to miss this. So come over to MMU and check us out. Uh, if you are currently doing your SPM, you don't have to wait until your results come out. The moment you have, or even while you're still doing your SPM now, you can check us out and apply using your SPM results. Of course, terms and condition applies. I would have to be very law correct here by saying, check out the website and look for the terms and condition. But basically, you would be able to apply using your SPM trial results. All right, so uh, why wait if you can start your journey with MMU now? You would want to also check out what we have released under our MMU scholarships and financial aids. We have a few of it that we have just released, and these are all available on our website. So go to mmu.edu.my or edu or, or mmu.edu.my slash intake to see the 25 reasons. I have actually mentioned five reasons why you would want to start your journey in the higher education with MMU and the various scholarship and financial aids that we are offering for this year. So I think that is all what we have in store for the April 2021 intake and you can definitely find out more on mmu.edu.my. So I think that is all from me, Miss Nurul Atika and um, or is Atira, sorry. Uh, so I guess see you guys all in MMU. Back to you, MMU Studios. Bersama Yayasan Universiti Multimedia Saya Abi Ashraf dari Fakulti of Management Ingin menyeru semua ahli akademik Untuk berzakat dan berwakaf Saya percaya zakat dan wakaf Dapat membantu pelajar-pelajar kita di Universiti Multimedia Ianya bermula dengan anda 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Zakat penyucian kepada jiwa dan harta Seperti mana yang difirmankan oleh Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala di dalam surah An-Nur ayat ke-56 Laksanakanlah solat, tunaikanlah zakat, taatlah kepada Rasul Nescaya kamu beroleh rahmat darinya Saya Rahayu Nizar Ramlan, Fakulti of Manik Segalanya bermula dari anda Alright, welcome back everyone. Hope you all had a good break. So this session we will be asking, uh, we'll be having a Q&A session. And let's go over with, there are a few questions actually for our speakers. Let's go over with Mr. Rishi Ravindran to Ms. Hashvini regarding what is your take on the recent charge of the sugar daddy creator? Right, we have a sugar daddy application, the one that was um, initially uh, blocked first, right, by the uh, MCM. Is that right, Ms. Ajwini? Yes, that's correct, Atira. Uh, the particular uh, website or the application, it became such a hidden issue recently because of a lot of university students apparently they were involved in this. Uh, basically, this application, and thank you for the question, all right. Uh, so, this particular application, it has been blocked by the MCMC. Right. It has been blocked, it's been suspended, it's no longer in uh, operation and the particular creator uh, has also been arrested. Dating applications itself, um, like Tinder, I think Tinder is a very good example, and also Facebook dating application, uh, I don't, for me personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's already mentioning Sugar Daddy. Sugar Daddy is basically a person who pays you for uh, sexual pleasures actually, sexual pleasures or some kind of intimacy kind of thing. So uh, this particular application, it's against uh, our law, which is Communication and Multimedia Act, Section 233. Because Section 233 of Communication and Multimedia Act, it mentions that um, like any content that is deemed to be obscene, indecent, false, menacing, or offensive in character, with the intent to annoy, abuse, threaten, or harass another person will be uh, unlawful and the person who actually posts such a content will be uh, facing imprisonment and also a happy amount of fine. So the Sugar Daddy website is actually kind of indecent because one, because of the name and that it is actually for, it's more like a high online, online call girl kind of thing. That's, that's how it actually oh. looks like. Online call girl. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know call girls, right? Yeah. So it's, it's just online. <laughs> so that's my take on it. And we have a law and it has been blocked. And please don't engage yourself in this kind of activities. It's not really legal. Yeah. Thank you, Atira. All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hashvini. Actually, the application I received, uh, it's actually called Sugar Book. Right. Yeah, it was blocked earlier by MCMC. Um, because of its different nature with other online dating apps, right? Right, okay. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Hashvini, for that. Next uh, question we have is regarding defamation. All right, see, there are plenty of cases where... All right, Ms. Hashvini, what is your opinion on this? Uh, I think Fran Mr. Francis can answer on this one. All right, yes. sure, Mr. Francis. Sure, sure. Okay, <laughs> could you please ask the question again, please? Thank you. Yes, of course. Um, there are plenty of cases where victims expose scammers. Can scammers sue victims for defamation? When victims uh, expose so, the scammers and so it becomes a defamation. Yes. Okay, all right. Now, defamation, very simple. Defamation is defined as follows. Where someone makes a statement against a party, a person, and that statement causes embarrassment, that statement causes uh, humiliation, and so on. There must be a social aspect where the person uh, is uh, affected by it because people don't want to deal with this person anymore, all right? Uh, we use the word shun. So uh, the, the society shuns this person because of the statement being out there. Now, 
having understood the meaning of this defamation, we can see that if you expose a person uh, as a scammer, uh, this will bring embarrassment to this person. This will bring embarrassment probably to the family as well. If they, if you know, if not the Lalu uh, Tawal, uh, this will also cause people to shun this person, you know, uh, because it means that this person is morally re reprehensible. All right. Um, so yes, there is a perfectly good reason to say that this is defamation, and the uh, me such uh, you know social uh, pariah state of say, social pariah. All right. Uh, however, there is also uh, ways around it. Uh, one, uh, if you are in this situation, you can always go back and say I am defending myself uh, with a uh, legally acceptable defense of justification. I am justified to call you a scammer. And these are the reasons. What I'm saying is true. All right, you are this person. Okay, so uh, that is a defense for the exposer. All right, so so if you're going to expose, make sure you have uh, actual proof and what you're doing is actually right. Now, another way to expose, not to say that I am uh, uh, advocating or saying, please go and do this. Uh, another way to expose is to avoid uh, identifying the person, all right? Avoid identifying the person, to remove the person's profile picture if it has, has the person's face, the name, and so on, all right? This also goes on to other areas. For example, uh, cars, you know, sometimes uh, we uh, Malaysians have the bad habit of double parking. All right, and it, it not only is it just rude, it's very inconsiderate. I would call it totally immoral. Okay, so uh, we take photographs of this person and we publicize and then we call names about this person. You can drive such an expensive car, but you don't know how to find parking, etc. etc. These are things that come up on social media. Uh, block out the, uh, the, the registration number of the vehicle, for example. Okay, so it uh, where the public is concerned. Uh, avoid identifying the person if you want to expose this person make a public sorry make a police report with all of the evidence you have make a police report that would be the best thing for you to do if you're going to expose scammers you want to create awareness remove the person's identification sorry i talked too much i have another question for mr jonathan all right for mr francis regarding defamation um, please elaborate on what are the grey areas scam victims need to contemplate on in terms of defamation when exposing scammers. This is the last yeah. question. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's the same same type yes. of question. Yeah? All right, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, if you are justified to make such a comment, all right, if you're justified to make such a comment where your comment itself is reasonable, it is a proper constructive, doesn't have to be constructive, but it is a proper criticism. Uh, you know, we are allowed to criticize. You know, uh, if tak bertempat, then we can criticize. If salah, we can criticize. If we, if it can be something that can be uh, improved on, we give a, a critical and uh, constructive criticism. Uh, so this is a good reason where we can uh, defame. All right. Another reason is where there is an actual, real, valid reason for it. What the person has done is wrong. He is a scammer. He is a double parker. He is a road bully. Uh, he does uh, uh, harass women. This is recently again on Facebook. I think last year I saw this. Someone who harasses one girl after another on social media. Right. OK. So if, if you're justified, then OK. It is true. But as far as is possible, avoid putting the person's identification there. That will be a police report. That would always be better. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Um, thank you for those questions regarding law. Uh, unfortunately, we are now towards the end of our program. Um, there's one last question regarding as an alumni MMU that I would address to both <coughs> Mr. Francis and Ms. Hashvini. We'll go with Ms. Hashvini first. What is your advice to MMU students and young alumni for their future undertakings once they've completed their studies here in MMU? Okay, thank you for the question, Atira. All right. Um, once you, are, you have completed your studies in MMU, the amount of possibilities that you have is abundant. There's so much of things you can do. Do and learn whatever you can. Anything, anything at all. And another thing is, 
as an MME alumni, I feel that MME has a very good name out there in the society as the students and then the, the, the employers, they actually like to have MME graduates. So take this opportunity to actually uh, sell, like, like hone your skills, just, just be extraordinary. So that's all. Thank you so much, from uh, Thank you so much, Atira. All right, all right. Thank you, Ms. Hash. Uh, okay, Mr. Francis, what about you? Anything that you'd like to share? Um, well, uh, I would say, um, at, when, uh, I, take, I, I pick up from where Ms. Hashvini says, be extraordinary. So I say, be creative, right? Okay, be creative, do something, uh, reinvent yourself. Today, the legal business is changing. Uh, and uh, in, in these days of where we are stuck at home, uh, uh, the legal business is being forced to relook at the way it works uh, again. Uh, so uh, in the future with uh, artificial intelligence taking over, so this is my cyber law uh, training uh, coming, kicking in, okay, with artificial intelligence taking over, uh, the legal industry is going to change even more, right? Uh, so we've got to be creative. Uh, unlock uh sorry come out of a box and don't look at yourself just exactly how everyone thinks the legal industry or a graduate with with a bachelor of laws should uh, would consider themselves to be at the same time always be willing to learn new things and even still don't know everything and they are still open to learning so be humble knowing that there's much to learn and be ever willing to learn Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Francis and also Ms. Hashvini. As a law student, I will actually take those advice coming from former law students, personally, all right? And, okay, we're going to wrap up our title of What You Don't Know Can't Hurt You. First, uh, first Mr. Francis enlightened us on environmental law, on the implications of having non-domestic pets at home, and we've also touched a little bit on wheels, the, the importance of having a wheel and also about trust. And then Ms. Hashvini had also shared with us on matters regarding cyber law, very important, uh, particularly on online defamation. We've gone into how we need to be mindful of the things that we say on the internet, even in real life. Okay, there's always going to be bad effects if you do not be, uh, be careful on what you say. And then we've had a fruitful share on in the hour we have learned a lot on our legal talk today and I bet just how important it is now that we know why it's important to know the law. And with this comes an end to our legal talk. On behalf of the organiser, Multimedia University Centre of Alumni, I would like to thank our speakers, Mr. Francis and Ms. Hashvini, for being here with us today. I'm grateful for you to be here and sharing your knowledge to alumni. So thank you all. We'll see you soon in our next Alumni Series Vibes. And take care and stay safe.